Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brittany Miller, and I am so excited to be back for this week's Facebook Live. We have a fun one in store today. We're going to be talking about Halloween safety tips, and I'm happy to be here with you today. So welcome. For those just jumping on, today we are talking about Halloween safety in the pandemic. As you know, Halloween looks much different in 2020. Hello, everyone saying hi. I see it in the comments. Thank you so much for joining us today. And Raising Special Kids, we just want to share some happy Halloween wishes and some guidance from some of our state leadership and the CDC on how to have a safe Halloween. So thank you again for jumping on. My name is Brittany. This is our Here With Families, Here For Families Facebook Live session. And today we're talking about how to have a fun and safe Halloween for this year's very different holiday. So thank you again for joining us. So like everything else in 2020, Halloween is going to look much different this year, but it doesn't mean you can't have fun with your families and we hope that you do so. We decided to um, check out some safety tips, share some, share some ideas to help families make those decisions for their own family. So that way we can all have a safe and healthy Halloween. So to start things off, I'm going to be sharing um, some tips from our Arizona Department of Health Services Director, Dr. Kara Christ. And she has some really helpful safety tips that families should be aware of and know about. So I'm just gonna start going down her list. She says, don't forget, continue to follow safety measures to help curb the spread of COVID-19. And of course, if anyone in your family is ill, please stay home, protect yourself, your friends, your family, and your neighbors. Number two, make sure trick-or-treaters wear cloth face masks. So the masks that our children wear for costumes, the regular, you know, plastic ones or things like that, those will not protect against the virus. So if you're wanting to have your children wear a mask, wear a cloth one so it can have that protection. Number three, social distance. You know, you're being outside, you're walking around the neighborhood, definitely social distancing is possible. Number four, use hand sanitizer frequently. I have been noticing in my friends and neighbors community pages that people are talking about they're going to have a bottle of hand sanitizer out with a table with the treats kind of spread out and then sit back for children to allow them um, to still trick or treat, but use that hand sanitizer and keep those germs at bay. Let's see, number five, find creative ways to avoid frequently touching surfaces like doorbells. Um, use those elbows. Um, don't touch the doorbell. That is something that um, I think I teach my kids to do that all the time just to avoid, avoid sharing germs, but that's a good one to remember, especially this Halloween. Number six, get creative. Consider holding virtual costume contests, do a Halloween treasure hunt, or a drive through haunted house. There are lots of fun ways to celebrate Halloween safely. Number seven, she suggests doing a scary movie night and it, or again, having a scavenger hunt in your home with your family. Thank you for those saying hello and jumping on. Happy to see our families joining us today. Number eight, Dr. Christ reminds us, homeowners can maintain, maintain COVID-19 safety by wearing masks and using tape to make lines to help trick-or-treaters maintain six feet of physical distance. That's an important one. And number nine, you may want to consider leaving individual bags or cups filled with goodies to take, she shares, or pass out wrapped candy by tossing it underhand into the children's bags or leaving it out. And she shares, be sure to wash and sanitize your hands often and do not open the door or go out and about if you're not feeling well. Dr. Christ reminds us that while outdoor festivities are presumed safer than indoor ones, anything that brings a lot of people together, as we know, now poses risks. So I thought those were really helpful ideas and considerations as you're um, planning out your Halloween festivities tomorrow for your family. Um, something else I did to prepare for today's Facebook Live is I reached out into our um, special needs community. I wanted to hear because as you know, mothers and fathers listening in, many of us have children with disabilities that are more at risk and we can be pretty creative when we're um, trying to celebrate safely and keep our children healthy and well. And I reached out and I have tons of fun ideas. I'm just going to highlight a few of those for you all listening in today. Okay, so one mom shares, we are staying in. We're carving pumpkins, doing Halloween crafts, watching movies, and having a nighttime graveyard hunt in the backyard and a scavenger hunt inside, leading to their trick-or-treat bags with candy. I don't know about you, but my kids would love that, and that, that sounds really fun. So good job, mom. 
Another fun one, um, a family's doing like a, a Halloween movie marathon starting tonight. And they're going to do movies, games, candy hunts, and a lot of their favorite foods indoors. Another friend shared a small group of neighbors is putting treats out and we will walk around so we can wave and say hi, but no contact and we're gonna be social distancing. So good job, that's a wonderful idea. And the weather is really beautiful right now. Another parent shared that she is organizing a virtual fall festival with family, doing a costume contest, pumpkin carving, and a candy jar guessing. And prize will be, prizes will be mailed. So thank goodness for Amazon, right? Okay, let's see here. Another parent shared, we're skipping the normal routine this year and doing a family um, movie night outdoors on the projector, Halloween baking, and a big bag of candy, of course. Another good one I really liked is some of the um, therapy agencies are really coming together and trying to provide fun activities for our children. And one mom shared that her um, daughter's speech therapy clinic, they're doing a trunk or treat, social distancing, social distancing style at the therapy clinic. Um, they're also having the great pumpkin come this year since it's a pandemic. Um, they aren't trick-or-treating in the neighborhood, but there will be goodies. So she says, think kind of like the Easter back basket, but they'll get a Halloween basket, which I thought that was really fun. I'm doing something similar for my daughters. Um, another parent shared, we're going to wear masks, hit about six houses and go home. We are sanitizing their candy and baskets as well. And lastly, another neat idea I thought that was really helpful and would be good for many neighborhoods to adopt is our neighborhood is doing the purple pumpkin program, which I had not heard of this before. Um, it's where houses that want to participate in contactless, COVID aware, safe trick or treating, they will put a, pur a purple pumpkin out on their porch. And this will notify people that it needs to include no contact between resident and child. So no, you know, communal bowls or things like that. There'll be sanitizing stations and masks so that people in the neighborhood will know and respect that that family is practicing COVID style trick-or-treating. Oh, and I did wanna share one more that I saw this morning from a parent that, that shared with me. She says they're doing, um, they're buying their own candy and they're doing a Halloween pinata at home with their kids and watching Halloween movies. So guys, my point is there are tons and of fun and spooky festive ways to celebrate Halloween this year. And whatever way you choose to do so for your family, raising special kids hopes you have a great one and make some memories with your children. This year has been very different than past Halloweens, but I know that we can still enjoy our families and be safe and protect our friends and neighbors. Thank you. Yes, we have some people commenting that these are great ideas. We hope you guys have a great Halloween as well. And to, um, I couldn't, I would need to also share before I forget, um, the CDC has given us some additional guidelines that are important to remember um, in addition to Dr. Chris that I thought were really good. And some of these apply to any Halloween, does it matter if we're in a pandemic or not? But um, to start things off, the first one they shared was to light up. So give your kids a glow stick, give your kids a flashlight. When we're walking around neighborhood streets, we want them safe. So light up and be safe. The second one they shared is to be respectful. So I hadn't really thought about this one, but it's important. Um, avoid singing and chanting and yelling. Activities that may elicit large quantities of droplets if we're not wearing masks, that's gonna spread the virus. So that's something that we probably haven't really thought about before, but of course, like anything else, 2020 is different and that is something we need to remember this Halloween. The third suggestion from the CDC is to consider getting a flu shot. This year, we know that um, the hospital and medical teams and healthcare workers have been really busy. And if we decide to get a flu shot, it'll protect our children against additional illness and keep our hospitals open so that they can treat COVID patients. So definitely a personal decision, but a good one to remember. Perfect. And we also are gonna be posting in our comments some of these guidelines. So we have the instruction from the CDC to look over for you to review. And it's really helpful. Um, this is a good one too. It's really important. Um, quarantine that candy. So I know I have children and they want to dive into that candy as soon as they're done trick-or-treating or while they're trick-or-treating. So if you decide to go out and about before you get home, wipe down all the candy wrappers, sanitize them, and have some candy stashed from your own home that they can snack on while you sanitize the candy they receive from neighbors. We all can do our part to slow down this virus, even at Halloween time. It's important too to remember lastly, to greet without touching. 
don't shake hands, bump elbows, or give hugs. And that's so hard. We're social people. And I know we miss our community and be able to hug each other and have that interaction. But we got to keep doing our part. Wave and verbally greet others and say hello if you're out and about in your communities. We want you to remember at Raising Special Kids to have a wonderful Halloween. All of these are just safety tips. We know that you'll make decisions for your family. We hope you have a healthy and safe Halloween this year. So wrapping things up, remember, sanitize that candy, social distance, wear your masks, make some new memories, come up with some creative ideas to celebrate Halloween this year. And if anything else, choose to celebrate at home if that's what you want to do, or if you're out in the neighborhood, utilize some of these safety tips so we can watch out for each other. And with that, it's short and sweet today. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween. And with that, we will see you next week. Bye guys.